Hi, everyone. This is Aaron. And this is James. And you are listening to the Colorado Real Estate Podcast, brought to you by Aaron and James Real Estate, where we talk about all things Colorado real estate. All right. For this podcast, we are going to talk about our number one tip for rentals. It's what we think you would get the highest return on investment for. Uh, the second topic we're going to cover is what we would do if we were becoming real estate agents in 2023. So if you're thinking about it, how we would advise you on that. And then finally, we're going to talk about Zocalo or Zocalo, uh, big debate in this house. And that's what's up. That's what we're going to talk about. I was just going to say before, I mean, should we tease it a little bit? What do you think the number one return on investment is for a rental or a house? Well, it's our segment, so I know what the, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, okay, what do I think people might think it is? Um, location, probably, um, which actually is a big one. I don't know. I mean, what else? forced appreciation potential? I think in the furnished space, I mean, mattresses are certainly becoming uh, very important. And I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, I, my clients sometimes seem pretty focused on decks. Uh, I do think sometimes people care about garages quite a bit. Yeah, storage. Fire, yeah, fireplaces have a decent return. Dedicated workspace for yeah. remote workers. I, I feel like that's a thing that people talk about that... You know what I think? I think if you have a breakfast bar, which is an island in your kitchen, that's always going to be their dedicated the work workplace. Space. Okay. None of those are actually the number one return on investment <laughs> for rentals. Um, it's photographs. Take good, professional, quality photographs of your place. Agreed. That's it. Um, it's not very expensive. It's a hundred bucks. We'll drop a link to Virtuance. Um, and if you Use that link. I think you get a credit because I think it's an affiliate link. We get a credit and you get a credit, but it's who we used. We used to use for all of our properties in Denver. We use somebody else now, but he's more expensive. He's 400 bucks for a photo shoot and Virtuance is a hundred. But yeah, I, I, I used to love Virtuance and I still do. I think they do a really good job. I, I've soured on them just ever so slightly only because I feel like the look that they give is a little too vibrant and can almost look like you've put a Instagram filter on it. Um, and I like a little bit more of a natural look, um, that the, the new guy does, but they are, um, incredibly efficient. You can order today and they're probably able to come out tomorrow. They return them in 24 hours. Um, and they're relatively, I mean, they're really affordable compared to other real estate photography. I will just say, yeah, do not use your Do friend, your, your nephew. Friend. I don't even care if your friend is a photographer. They don't know real estate photography. It is a specialty in how you, I don't know, the angle of your lens, the wide angle and where you set up the camera. It really, really does matter. The real estate photographers too. I mean, they do this day in and day out. They know what looks best, what the end client cares most about. So yeah, to James's point, even if someone is a professional photographer, don't use them unless they're a professional real estate photographer, because it's like, it's a hundred bucks and, and your listing will stand out so much. It's so obvious when someone is using non-professional photos. And, and aside from the fact that you know, your marketing for the place looks terrible. It also says that you're not a professional and that you are not taking it as seriously. And maybe that you're going to nickel and dime the person on everything, um, when you're doing the negotiations or, um, that's more if you're in a real estate transaction, but also for the tenant, I see that. And I think is this place actually set up well? Um, so just pay for professional photos. It, it really, yep. Yeah. Hey guys, we wanted to let you know we are offering real estate consulting services now. The people that are using this would be, you know, agents that need a second opinion and or buyers or sellers that are part of a transaction or an investment and they just want someone that's not part of the deal to look it over and say these assumptions are right or this situation is going well or it's not. We can also pull laws for you. We can look at your numbers and say uh, short term, medium term or long term makes the most sense for your investment. We're happy to look at your listing. Just a whole array of services that again we can provide for you as kind of like a second opinion or real estate therapy if you will um, for again people that that just want a second set of eyes. If you would like to schedule that, we're taking calls right now on Tuesdays and Fridays. You just need to email me at Aaron at Aaron and James real estate.com. What has been written down on the paper is 
<laughs> what would we do if we were real estate agents, or if we were starting to be real estate agents in 2023? And James read this and said, I don't even know what that topic means. <laughs> what do you think that, take a stab. What do you think that topic means? Well, what what we would do if we were going to become a real estate, I mean. If you were going to start, if you were a new agent in 2023. Sure. I guess that's a more succinct way of saying it. Um, I would do the exact same thing that we did when we started. Um, I think it's harder right now to enter into the business because uh, it's just a tougher market. But um, there's just fewer buyers. People are kind of, you know, some people are sitting on the sidelines, which I don't think is the smart thing to do, but some people are. So there's fewer buyers. You've got the same number of real estate agents fighting for a smaller pool of uh, potential buyers. Um, but what I would do is I would find a niche. I would become an expert in something and I would produce a lot of content around that expertise um, because that's how you get in front of people. I actually think it's an okay time to enter the market. I didn't for the last five years because my issue with that was that if you were a brand new agent, um, you're having to convince people to spend 50,000, 75,000 over, give up all their rights. That would be a very tough thing to do if you didn't have the confidence that came with knowing the market and having a little bit of practice at it. So I really doubted people's success in the past to be able to deliver that if you're working with buyers a lot. But right now you're not having to do that as much. It's a much cleaner negotiation just because although the market is heating up, um, it's not as hot as it's been. So it's an okay time to get in. I think what I meant by this is like how you would start it. I think a niche is really smart. You either have an extremely good network that trusts you a lot, which we never had. We didn't have a super strong network. No, we, no one trusted us. <laughs> they still don't. <laughs> um, and so it wasn't like that. So we became experts in something. And then I guess my other thought is even for us, like now when we are not having a particularly busy month or a busy week, it's content, content, content all the time. I think real estate, you should see your real estate job as supporting your clients and staying on top of education, but also um, constantly producing video articles. And I, I probably wouldn't even write anything anymore. I would probably lean all in on video. I mean, I disagree with that. And, and our, I think our numbers still bear out that uh, some of our best SEO producing uh, articles on our website uh, send a lot of clients still to us. I think you're right. I think it's probably a waning part of the marketing uh, tool belt, but um, I still think there's there's room for having uh, targeted articles that answer a question that a lot of people are putting into Google. So you get in front of them that way. I think, you know, we have a particular way of doing this, which is again, content. I think a lot of people, if you're more introverted, I'm sorry, if you're more extroverted, you might go to events, you might go uh, to networking things, young professionals events, um, join the Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, I think there are other ways to go about it. Um, it's not really how we operate. And I'm, I think you're kind of shooting, you know, blind in a way. You don't know if you're going to meet someone who actually needs something in the the benefit of content is that it gets in front of the very type of person that you're trying to get as a client. Yeah. I actually had in my notes, if you're a new agent, do not go to real estate meetups, but it also is true on the flip side. So if you are looking for a property, you're looking to either sell one or buy one, I would not get an agent from a real estate meetup unless it's the agent that's hosting it because the agents in those meetups are extremely green for the most part. There's a reason why they're there. Um, and also if you're a green agent going to one of those, I'm not even sure what the return is. You're just hanging out with a bunch of other real, you're hanging out with your competition. You are not hanging out as much with the people that actually need it. So you would be smarter. I think to go to a networking event for divorcee, divorces or go mm -hmm. to a networking event for people that are new in town or go to a networking event for anything else besides real estate. I, I cannot think of a worse place to try and source clients than a real estate meetup. <laughs> If you are new to this podcast and you are female, make sure to check out Denver Women Invest. It's denverwomeninvest.com. You don't have to be in Denver. You could be in Colorado Springs. You could be out of state, but it is a networking and a free education club that we do every month online where we have speakers and local investors come in and talk. Please do join us if that sounds interesting to you. Uh, we're talking about Zocalo, uh, which I did pronounce it correctly because I looked up the pronunciation uh, guide in both the Colorado Springs Magazine and in Portland where there's a different uh, restaurant named the exact same thing. Anyway, it is 
Zocalo, I believe. It is in downtown Colorado Springs on South Tejon, and it's... Tacos. It's, it's tacos. Yeah. It's Tulum in Colorado Springs is how they're describing it. But they did. It, the interior is really nice. And it's it. Um, they have a gigantic window where you can sit on these swings, which if you've ever been to Mexico, a lot of the bars have like these swings where you sit at the bar and then the ocean is right there. And in this case, you sit on these swings and then a pavement patch and an attorney's office is right across the street, (laughs) which is just like the ocean. But the food was awesome. And I do, I appreciate the design and it was busy. Yeah. So I I like that area that you're talking about, basically a a huge garage door that opens up. So you're sitting at a bar that looks out onto the street. You can do great people watching. Um, The food was really good. Um, I got uh, pescado. So basically fish tacos, um, blackened, and they were really good. I did not like my second one, which was lengue. Lengui, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, beef tongue. Um, I thought it was kind of boring, but the El Pastor looked fantastic. Uh, the Margs were good. Um, and I, yeah, I wrote down industrial Tulum as the vibe. And I thought it was a really cool space. A lot of people were there. I had a non-alcoholic margarita and it was really good too. I mean, a lot of times people mess up margaritas, period, but trying to get a non-alcoholic margarita is always a challenge, but it no, was great. No, did good. It was more tart than sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, the owners of the place, I don't know who they are, but they have owned uh, two restaurants in Chicago. So they've brought kind of a big city cool vibe to downtown Colorado Springs. All right, everyone, that was our show for today. Thanks for tuning in. We're at Aaron and James Real Estate.com. If you have questions about buying, selling, investing, house hacking, we are happy to field any of those. Find us on Facebook, YouTube, leave us a five star review on iTunes or the podcast app of your choice.